In the linear optimization problem, we want to maximize the value of an objective function L subject to a set of linear constraints on the variables x1 through xm. We also generally require the positivity constraint. By introducing slack variables, we can turn the inequalities into equalities, and our fundamental theorem tells us the greatest value of the objective function will be found at one of the vertices of the region, which correspond to the solutions where the free variables are all zero and all slack variables are non-negative. Unfortunately, the number of vertices increases rapidly with the number of constraints and the number of variables. So is there a way to avoid having to check all the vertices? Since we're trying to maximize some objective function L, let's see if we can use L as a guide to which vertices we should check. An important idea to remember, the order we list the variables determines which are free and which are basic. Now imagine we're at some point inside the feasible region. To maximize the objective function, we'd like to move in a direction that increases it. But this is the same as choosing the values of our variables. So what if we rewrote our system so that these variables were free? For example, suppose we want to maximize an objective function subject to a set of constraints and the positivity constraints. Since we want x and y to be the free variables, they need to be the last variables in our listing. Introducing these slack variables gives us our system. So we'll translate this into an augmented coefficient matrix. And we'll row reduce this. In fact, let's take this all the way to row echelon form. Our original augmented coefficient matrix becomes. And for convenience, let's translate this back into a system of equations. Setting our free variables equal to zero gives us the basic feasible solution. In this case, it's. And the value of our objective function is. Let's see if we can do better. Now, the important thing to realize is that since x and y are free variables, we can change one without changing the other. And because we started at x equals zero, y equals zero, and we required they be greater than or equal to zero, we can only increase them. So which one should we increase? Since our goal is to maximize the objective function, let's increase the variable that would cause the greatest increase in the objective function. So let's use methods for multivariable calculus, if we have to. But remember, the value of calculus is converting nonlinear problems into linear problems. In this case, since L equals 12x plus 5y, L will increase if we increase either x or y. But since the coefficient of x is greater than the coefficient of y, we'll get a greater increase if we increase x. So let's leave y at 0 and increase x. So how much can we increase x by? If y equals 0, our first equation becomes now, since x is a free variable and c1 is a basic variable, let's solve for c1, the basic variable, in terms of x, the free variable. Now, since c1 is a slack variable, it must be non-negative, and so we need, which we could solve, So we can set x equal to 100. Or can we? Don't forget there's two other slack variables. If y equals 0, our second equation will be... Again, c2 must be non-negative, and so we find... And if y equals 0, our third equation will be... And in order to make c3 non-negative, we require c2 
So in order for all slack variables to be non-negative, we require So the most x can be is 80. So if we set our free variables y equals 0 and x equals 80, then the remaining variables are and the value of our objective function will be Notice our new solution is, since our basic feasible solution is when our free variables are zero, this isn't the basic feasible solution. Or is it? Remember, the basic and free variables depend on the order we list the variables. This would be the basic feasible solution if our free variables were C3 and Y. This insight leads to the simplex algorithm. The key idea is, find the basic feasible solution, identify which free variable creates the greatest increase in the objective function, find the greatest possible value of that free variable. The solution will identify another set of free variables. So lather, rinse, repeat. Let's see how that works out.